Hello guys, long time no see. I'm Pablo, I'm back here with a new video for the Bubble Crash Course and I'm really excited about this one because we've been wanting to record this for a really long time. The new responsive editor is finally here, the new responsive engine. And, and it's working great, it's amazing, it's based on Flexbox and uh, you'll see, you're really going to enjoy this, this experience because it's basically much easier to create a, a beautiful application and it's also much uh, faster and much more reliable. So um, let's get started. The first thing that I want to cover is why is Flexbox important? What has changed? So previously, the way we would design in Bubble is we just drag and drop a group uh, into a page or a text or a button, an image, whatever. And I'm going to give it some color. And then if we wanted to put another element, imagine a button, we would also drag and drop it here. And then we would try to align it. We would use the grid, right? That you can more or less see over here. I can also make it a bit more visible. You know, you would try to align elements by doing this. Then you would have to define whether this is a, a fixed width or not, the minimum width, maximum width. Uh, you would try to define your own breakpoints, probably using the build camp system with the 320 pixels minimum size and all these things, but it was pretty complicated to create a, a responsive website. And why is that? Well, basically because we weren't using any structure. We weren't defining columns or rows, which is how the web works. And that is what we're going to be doing with Flexbox. I'm going to get this again like this. And I'm going to turn this page into a responsive page with a new responsive engine. So. How do, how do we do this? I'm going to delete these groups because we're not going to need them anymore. I come to a responsive page and I click upgrade responsive. Okay, the page is upgraded and we now see that there is no, no symbol over here. So that's perfect. What happens if we try and drag and drop something in the page? Well, it pretty much works the same way. And this is because the first thing that you need to do is come here to the layout tab. Uh, I'm going to color this group before I change it, just so that you see the instant change with this responsive engine. Instead of fixed, with the, which is the previous behavior, we are going to choose one of these three options. First, I'm going to choose columns, and you see how this immediately aligns to the top left of the page. And this is basically because there's going to be a structure. There's going to be a structure in our page, whether we want it or not. So it's this cannot lay around somewhere. It's always going to stick to the page. Borders. In this case, the left and top border. Now, I'm going to drag and drop some other groups in the page. And let's look at what's going on. Okay. So there, the, the new group, even though I, I drop it here, it's immediately sticking to the previous group. It's adjusting its position so that it's below the first group that I put, that I put in the page. If I put another group, same thing happens. Oops, yeah. And that's going to keep happening with every group that I put. It doesn't matter if it fits the page somewhere else. You see how it, they are all aligning on top of each other. And that is because the setting that we have chosen here is a column. So we have chosen our page to be a column. What happens if I change this to row? Well, something very weird, which is that the groups are trying to be in a row, but they can't because the width is not enough. I'm going to change the width of the page. And we can see how now, because they have enough space, they are stacking left to right in a row. If I change again the layout of the page to column, they go back to column. And this is pretty exciting because it means that nothing is going to be just left on the page, laying there in the middle of nowhere. Everything is going to be perfectly organized with Flexbox. So now, before I continue, let me change the page. I'm going to move to an example just to explain the different settings of the page and the different containers that you can use. There we are. So the, the thing that I want to explain is that we see that the boxes here are aligned left to right. And we are defining that not inside each box, but in the page. And this is because the page is the container. 
And this is super important because we're going to be defining the behavior of the child elements in each container. Which means that if we want to align all these elements to a right, we select the page and then we give it a right um, alignment. If we want to center them, we will also do it in the page. And we have two different settings, two more settings that we can use for the uh, alignment of the elements. One is a space around, and what this will do is add the same space at the side of each element. In this case, we have the same space at the left and the right. And you might think, yeah, but this is bigger than, than the left space. Of course, because we need to add the space at the right of the blue element and the space at the left of the red element. And then the, the last setting is a space between, I think it's called, yeah, space between, which is basically the same, but you don't leave any space at the um, sides of the last elements. So in this case, there's no space over here and there's no space at the left of the blue element. But let's remember, we are defining this in the page, not inside each element. And before we start complicating things, let me just change this to column and see what happens. Well, pretty normal, right? Uh, if we change these two columns, they all stack on top of each other. But we see already that there is a difference, which is that we don't have these container alignment options. And this is because they, in Bubble, I don't know why, um, unlike with code, they haven't yet implemented the, the different alignment solutions. Okay, so it's a bit harder to space elements on the y-axis. If we go back to row, However, we see how the container alignment options are here. And I want to show you something else, which is how to put this element on a different part of the page. Because you might be thinking, okay, the same way we can change the alignment and make them left, centered, or right, why don't we change it and make them um, centered, but in the vertical axis, or maybe uh, put them in the bottom of the page? Well, to do that, you need to go to each element in particular and then change it here okay there is the option for vertical alignment and you can define that an element is centered that an element sticks to a bottom or that, a, that an element stretches and right now you see you might think this is not stretching and it's because it's fixed but if we change this for example to a column you see how it immediately changes okay we have aligned to the top center, bottom, or stretch. And you can do this for all the elements. So you can, for example, put this one on the center, and then this one is in the top. And now, if we change this to column, no, not this one. I don't want to change the yellow one. I want to change the page. We see how we have these um, alignment options again for each element. But this time it says horizontal alignment. So depending on the container, if it's a row or a column, when we go to the child elements, we will be able to align them on the other axis. Okay, so in this case, it's a column. We see that the groups are stacking on top of each other. We have the blue, then the red, then the yellow, then the green one. And if we want to move them on the horizontal axis, we have these options. Okay, and again, we can also stretch. So this is fixed, and that's why we are not seeing the horizontal alignment option to stretch. But if I change this to a row and, and check fixed width, we see how another option appears, which is basically to stretch. And the default behavior immediately when we uncheck max width is to go and expand, because here the max width is uh, infinite. But we're going to see this in a second, and I don't want to go too fast, okay? So to recap, let's put them all back where they were. And the important thing that I really want you to understand is that we have rows or columns, and if you have a row, the main axis is the horizontal axis, and you define the behavior of the child elements in the parent element. So in this case, for example, you define if this one, this one, this other one, and this other one, how they are spaced between each other, 
you don't define them in the child element you define all that in the parent which is the page okay and you can see the, that over here but if you want this to change in the other axis in this case the elements are in a row so in the vertical axis you need to define it in the child element and you come here and you can align it however you want if you choose to have as the container layout in this case of the page a column the opposite behavior is the one that will take place and this happens for all the elements as we have seen over here if you make this a column for example the group i think we are in group red yeah and then you drag some different groups over here and color them you see how they stack on top of each other and again for each group if we want to change um, their position in the other axis in this case this is a column so in the horizontal axis you go to each child element and you change it now uh, i have explained row and column i'm not going to explain a line to parent yet because it's not really that important and we're gonna uh, see an example when we build a dashboard but until then i'm just gonna keep explaining things in rows and column because the majority of the things that you're gonna do are going to be using rows and columns and before anything i'm just gonna take product hand and i'm gonna go through the web page just talking about rows and columns to see how this website might be built so first of all up here we have a header the header is of course a row because all the elements are left to right in the horizontal axis but again in this group there are probably two different rows so this one first that groups the logo the search box and the links the header links and then this other row that holds the buttons and this how to post a product uh, link and maybe in the in the header they are using something like a space between or, or a space around and again in this other row they're probably using the same thing these different links might be spaced the same way with a space around or a space between or maybe they have margins which we haven't seen yet but this is clearly a row now the image uh, it might be by themselves or by, by itself or it might also be inside a group of type row and over here this part is pretty interesting because you you might think okay this is clearly a column right the, the elements are, are stacking on top of each other and this is also clearly a column we have an image then we have a group then another group they're stacking on top of each other not left to right yes but how is this behaving with respect to this so these two things are in a row this is to the left and this is to the right and then inside this big row we would have one column with all the products and then another product which has this image play the stories uh, jobs etc etc and well this inside the column over here this first thing is a row and then this repeating group each one is also a row but inside this row again we have content that is stacked on top of each other and i hope you see where i'm going all the websites are constantly composed of different rows and columns which are inside rows and columns which are inside rows and columns so you will be using the two groups constantly together and just to illustrate it a bit more i have created here a sample wireframe of how product hunt could be built and just to be clear i have no idea if this is how a uh, product hunt is built but this is how i would build a clone in bubble so first of all if we come up here we're gonna have a row and this is a floating group uh, it's a header and the container layout is a row okay and i would actually choose a space between or a space around and then stack here the image uh, the links the buttons etc we're gonna see it in a in a different video uh, that is going to be added to this course then we have the, the image which is in a group and that has a row layout 
Although here, if you think about it, it wouldn't really matter because we're not going to have any other element apart from the image. So the rows and the columns make sense when you need to put uh, different elements and you want them to be either left to right or top to bottom. If you have one element, it doesn't really matter. But now let's go to the interesting part of the page. Remember over here, how is this structured? So I have set up a group that is called main container, that is a row. And then inside this group, we have the first one, which is a column of the products. And then another one, which is a sidebar over here, that is also a column. You see how the layout is set to column. And if we go to the products um, column, well, first of all, I have a group inside just for margin purposes. We'll see why in a, in a bit. But then I have a group that is going to hold the title and the sort option. And this is set to row. And it's going to have one group here and then another group here. And this corresponds to your next favorite thing and features because they need to be left to right. You see, they're not top to bottom. Below this row, we have the repeating group. And inside the repeating group, the layout is a row because, of course, this is a clear row. If we come here, we have first the group product details, which is also a row. It has the image. And then it also have a, has a group that is the product, the, the real details, the title, the description, etc. And this is a column because we're going to be stacking the texts on top of each other, right? As we see here, we have the title then the description and then the different tags. And then over here, we have something which could be a row or a column. It doesn't really matter because uh, it only has one element which is going to be the button to upvote uh, one product. Oops. Over here, everything is a column because everything is stacking on top of each other. And if we go to the product homepage, we can see how everything is a column. Although if we are going to write some details, like for example here, if we're going to really specify things like the number of upvotes, the comments and the tags, even though this whole group is a column, inside the column, we might have a row like we see over here. So yeah, I hope this, this um, example helps. And uh, let's go back because I'm going to explain some interesting concepts in Babel. And well, this exercise that I have done with Product Hunt is super useful and I would do it every time I need to design a website from scratch. And it's much easier with Flexbox because you can also see how everything behaves responsibly over here in the responsive editor. You know, you can check if everything is collapsing as you want it, if everything disappears, maybe you want all of this group to disappear at some point, right? And you can also check that. Like for example, right now it's disappearing. Maybe I would do it a little bit before, but yeah, you get the gist, you get what I mean. So now let's go back to Bubble because I'm going to show you this page and uh, we're going to be learning a little bit more. So uh, I have this, this simple container, this is a row. Uh, I have it over here and it has five different boxes which are all fixed. I just want to show you that the same way that I, I told you that we cannot drag and drop a group over here and pretend that it sticks somewhere. If we want to put a group in the middle of two different groups and we drag it there, it's not going to let us. It's going to move it to the to the side, right? So how do you actually put it in the middle of two groups if you want to add a group? Well, we have here four different options, which are make first, previous, next, and make last. And we can move the groups around inside a row or a column by clicking them. So if you want to add something in the middle of a, of a container, you just make use of this. And it's super, super, super useful. Why? Because before you needed to actually move everything with the arrows, you needed to look at the coordinates, uh, and it was a real mess. Also, if there is not enough space, and let's just illustrate this, I'm going to make this a little bit wider, also give it some color. If you want to 
drop another group over here and it's too big it's actually gonna move it because it knows that it cannot be there and well this make first uh, make last previous and next behavior also works with a column container so now of course this one was a row as we as we saw but i just dragged another group to the page let's make this again also row it's not going to be fixed width so that it expands i'm going to give it some some color something like uh, yellow and what happens if we want to move this uh, above the other group we can come to layout and if we click previews uh, let's see what's going on uh, okay yeah it's working now perfect so we can see uh, we have a bit of hidden groups over here that i had prepared so it was moving it i think here in the element tree but not not in in our page but we see how if i hit previews it automatically puts it on top of the other one okay and there is a margin over here set that i'm going to eliminate just so that it doesn't confuse us before i explain what the margins are so yeah we hit previous or next we see how we're moving the groups and imagine we had a bunch of different groups here okay and i'm going to change the colors okay i also changed uh, the sizes to make it more realistic and this could very well be just parts of a landing page you know different sections what happens if you want to imagine here you have the title here you have some content and here you have the pricing well maybe you want this pricing to be um, above the the content well now it's super easy because you just hit previous Pre yeah previously designing a landing page with bubble something that is super simple was not very enjoyable whereas now it's actually super easy and it's super easy to change it afterwards so these make first, previous, next, and make last uh, options are amazing. Now I'm going to get rid of these groups and I'm going to explain a new concept, um, which is the, the width, the classic width, fixed, minimum, maximum, but how does it work with Flexbox? So here we have two different groups and they are both they both have a minimum width of 320 and they don't have a maximum width and this minimum maximum width works pretty much the same way as before but it's much easier to work with this because actually if you make changes you're going to see the changes in the editor in real time as you might already have realized like if i change and say that the max width is 400 pixels i'm doing it for this green group you see how it immediately shrinks and instead of being 480 which is what it was doing right now and um, before it's actually just taking a little bit less of a space and leaving the rest for the other one if i change it again yeah you see how it's taking actually not 480 but 640 which is half of our editor which is uh, 1280 and actually I'm going to use this to explain why our editor is 1280. If you're watching this, you're probably already familiar with uh, how we build because it's also how build can build and how I have uh, been using the editor in the rest of the course. But we try to use multiples of 320. And this is because 320, let's go again to Product Hunt, let's inspect our page. It's the minimum mobile screen. Okay, it's the smallest mobile screen. You see it here, it's mobile S, it's a type of iPhone, and it's 320 pixels. So we're always going to try to design with 320 pixels in mind. We're going to use multiples of that. We're going to use 320, 640, 960, and 1280. Okay, basically because that's going to allow us to separate our page in two, three, four parts, and then very easily create responsive uh, pages. So now I have these two groups that because I have chosen to set a minimum width of 320 but no maximum width, they're occupying as much space as they can. But if we come here to a responsive tab and we start shrinking the page, uh, look at the pixels also over here, you'll see that there's going to be a point where, yeah, they um, break, there's a break point and one group jumps below the other and that's 
in 640 pixels exactly you see right now they are both uh, on the minimum size 320 and then we make it a little bit smaller one jumps uh, below the other one now if i come to the ui builder and i say for example that this one doesn't have a, a minimum width so it can go down to zero you see that it's not going to down to zero yet like it has enough space this one mm, is is um, extending a bit more but this is not zero yet but the moment we start compressing the page it's going to go down to 320 and after that it's going to break okay which actually wouldn't happen in real life because the minimum screen is 320 but you see how it works now I'm going to use something else. I'm going to go back to 320 here and I'm going to choose a maximum width of 640, for example. And now if we come here, we see actually it might be easier to see it over here. Yeah, we see how this has the maximum width, which is 640. And this other one has taken all the remaining space in the page. If we set a maximum width here so that both have a maximum width of 640 you see what happens they are both 640 pixels and there is remaining space to a right why to a right because the alignment in this group is left if we made the alignment right the remaining space would be at the left and now i'm going to show you one different setting with the width because the, the fixed width is pretty obvious right you check fixed width you can you can choose the amount and uh, you see how it immediately changes right minimum width and maximum width are also pretty intuitive but there is one here that says fit width to content and what does this mean exactly so let's take the container of these two groups let's give it some color maybe uh, white and in this group which is a row if we check fit width to content you see what happens it immediately checks for the minimum width which is 320 plus 320 and it fits that width again if we uncheck it it's going to extend but if we check it it's going to fit the width to the content that is inside the group and now the same thing happens with fit height to content but you might think yeah but it's not really fitting right because there is a space over here like if i uncheck yeah sure it's bigger but if i check it why it's not actually going to the to the bottom of the group and this minimum height of 400 um, pixels is limiting that fit height to content if we remove it and we say that there is no minimum height it basically depends on the content you see how immediately it uh, moves up to the bottom of the other two groups. If I uncheck it, then yes, it goes down to occupy as much space as possible. And now for a more practical example of how this might be used, I have another group called group tags. And I'm going to hide this, this other one. I'm not going to fit the width to content. And by the way, you know that if I uncheck visible on page load, this is also amazing with a new editor because I have the collapse when hidden um, setting for that group. It, uh, let me check <laughs> what's going on. Come on, it should work. Yeah, maybe I have to click it here sometimes. Uh, you see the editor is a little bit glitchy still, but uh, if it's not visible because it has the collapse when hidden option, it it is also not visible on the editor, which is super useful because it doesn't occupy space and it's much faster to work with different groups. Now I have here a, a group that I call tags and I am a, basically using some text elements inside a group. Okay, this group is a group row. I'm going to change the color to blue so that you can see it. And what I want to show you is that this text doesn't actually have a minimum width, doesn't have a, well, it's zero, the minimum width, doesn't have a maximum width, it could grow to infinite, but it has fit width to content. And that way I can make sure that regardless of the text that I have here, 
like for example I could have something much longer imagine a really long name the content is always going to fit and that's perfect I'm gonna go back to bubble if I uncheck fit width to content it's gonna occupy as much space as possible in the row unless I put a maximum width but sometimes you don't know what the maximum width is because you don't know what the text is going to be like if you check fit width to content you make sure that this is always going to work well this might seem like a button by the way but it's a text I'm just uh, setting some some dark background and a white font and all the different texts have the same setting just uh, with fit width to content imagine this could also be a repeating group if it's a repeating group and you just define the first uh, text you don't know how big it's going to be every element so you want that text to be variable and that was impossible in the previous editor but in this editor it's uh, much easier and now that we're seeing these tags i'm going to use them also to explain a new concept that are the margins this is something that is super super good and i'm glad that they include them in this um, editor over here we have the top left right and bottom margins and we can define the space with respect to the rest of the elements or the container by just typing here the margins that we want so if we set up for example 20 in each side you see how it's leaving this margin and this is going to be respected all the time it doesn't matter the size of the screen now normally i don't add but hey, margins like this of course what i do is that i add always either left or right margin if i'm in a row like in this case every element has the left margin well not this one but i would add it and um, this could also be right margin okay now we're using left but it's pretty much just so that all the elements are consistent okay it wouldn't make sense to use left and right but you can either use left in all of them or right in all of them if you were using left and right what would happen is that in the end what you're doing is basically just like a space around okay for all of them this setting and you could also think okay why do we need margins if we have something like a space around or a space between let's let's see what happens i'm, I'm gonna just get this color this row i'm gonna duplicate it there we are i have it here i'm gonna eliminate the margins and see the difference okay we have here these five and if i choose a space between or no a space around you see how they are all spaced if i choose a space around there also all spaced but sometimes you don't really want that much spacing right what you want is some custom margin so that's why you would use this and of course you could define maybe a maximum width or something like this and then set uh, the the space around or space between but sometimes it just doesn't work maybe because you don't know the size of the elements maybe because you have other elements in the page that are interacting etc it's really important to use margins all the time apart from the left and the right margins which are normally used uh, with rows you also have top and bottom margins and actually you also you combine them the all the different types but over here as you might have realized this group d with uh, the red and the blue and the green groups is not touching the group uh, above it that's because we have here this 80 pixels margin if i eliminate it there's of course this um, overlap but now the typical thing is to add a margin either on top or uh, at the bottom of each group if you have a column layout which is uh, what most websites have and you can choose either top or bottom i normally choose top because you know that there is always going to be a margin at the top so that way all the groups are consistent and you start adding by top uh, at the top and you also continue adding the margin at the top of your groups okay so over here i would add it uh, at the top and then if i had more groups i would keep that same convention now, something that is really important with margins is that you need to be careful how you add them if you want to respect breakpoints. And let me show you why. I'm gonna put two groups inside here. 
But first, actually, first let me show you what happens if you add the margins in these two groups, okay? Gonna uh, just hide the other these other two groups. Yep. And let's check the behavior. Let's just say that the minimum width for these two groups is 320. That's it. Let's check in the responsive tab that they're working as we expect. So that one jumps exactly at 640 pixels. Perfect. And now let's see what happens if we add some margin to this red group to the left and to the green group to the left again. Pretty normal, right? We might have some content here. We might have some content here. So we want uh, this to always have a small margin. Well, we open group D and we already see that these groups, the breakpoint is coming way before, actually at 680 pixels because this 20 pixels margin is respected. And that means that 640, so 320 plus 320 plus 20 plus 20 is what is always going to be respected. So the breakpoint comes 40 pixels earlier. And it's going to be really hard for you to control this with a lot of groups and to actually know when your breakpoints are taking place if you add margins this way. So what I normally do is that I remove here the margins and I add a group inside of this. So I'm going to do it and I'll be back in a sec. So here we have it. It's just type row, no minimum width, no maximum width, basically because the parent group is already controlling that this never goes below 320. And I'm adding the margins here, 20, 20, 20, 20. OK, and the content is going to be in this uh, section. So there is going to be that space that we have artificially created with the green group. OK, I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it here. I'm going to change the margins to 40. And I'm going to change the layout to column just to imagine that we have a different group. And just for you to see that it works exactly the same way. So now if we go to the responsive tab and we test our we test our breakpoints. Let's see when is it breaking? 640. Okay. Which is exactly what we want our page to behave like. So this is how we are working right now. And just to be clear, this might not be necessary in the future if we have padding, okay? Basically, because we will be able to maybe put all our elements directly here and our text, uh, buttons, etc., and then add some padding in the, in the outer group uh, that adds margin in the inside instead of, instead of the outside. But right now there is no padding setting in, in Bubble. And we've been asking for it in the last uh, couple of months, but they haven't implemented it yet. And uh, yeah, they say they'll implement it soon, but <laughs> hopefully sooner than uh, Flexbox. And uh, now, seriously, I'm really grateful to Bubble. They've done a great job with the responsive engine, but we know that sometimes they, they take a long time to do things. So I wouldn't rely on padding anytime soon. And that's why I'm explaining this small trick for you to actually make sure that your breakpoints take place at when you want them to take place. But well, related to that, I also want to show you something um, that we need to, to do basically because we don't have padding, okay? So imagine here you're putting some, some content. Actually, let me choose something else like this one, which is bigger. I'm gonna add a button as well. Wow, that's a terrible button. I haven't changed that style. Um, let me add something like an icon. Yep. Let's make it more visible. Let's just imagine that we add some content over here. Okay, like this. And you want to leave some uh, margin on the top. Well, it would be super easy 
to just apply margin to all the elements if we could add padding to the dark red group because we would just add an internal margin but we cannot so we need to go one by one and define the padding here the margin so this one imagine you wanted to leave 10 pixels you would go to the text then you would go to a button then you would go to the icon and of course you could you could group these three things together and then apply the margin to a group but uh, you might end up with a lot of unnecessary groups um, so yeah that's another reason why we really need padding uh, as soon as possible so now um, before we go I'm going to show you also something which is that you can define different things in the conditional tab okay and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that this margin, which is 40 pixels, goes to 20 pixels if our uh, page width is below something. Like, for example, let's say uh, 640. So over here, the condition is going to be when the pa current page width is less than 640. So when there's the, a breakpoint, then the margin the left one and the right one are going to be 20 pixels instead of 40. And now if we go to a responsive tab, let's check this, let's look at the margins. Oops, what happened? Did I change it correctly? Let me check. No, I think I'm defining Yeah, I haven't uh, named the elements correctly. I was defining the, um, the margin in the parent and I need to define it in the other one, the one that actually has margin, okay? So now if we do this and we go back to responsive page, yeah, so these are the, the margins. And now you see how the margins have actually turned into way smaller. They're actually the same as the as the other groups, okay? And you might want to to change that and maybe even make them smaller with uh, just the tiniest uh, fonts, okay? So you could add uh, different conditionals to the same group just to mm. define exactly how you want your groups to behave with uh, every page screen. And the um, we're waiting for a lot of things to be implemented in Flexbox, okay? Of course, it would be great to, for example, change these margins conditionally on um, gradually. As the page decreases, you could also be changing the margin with the page size. And right now, you need to do it with steps, right? So less than 640 pixels wide. If that's the case, then you change the margins from 40 to 20. But you cannot go like 40... 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, gradually, right? But also it would be amazing to be able to change things like the minimum width or the maximum width uh, in these conditionals, or maybe things like the alignment that maybe at some point you want this to go up instead of down, you know? Normally the group that is in the right goes below, but it would be great to define that when the breakpoint um, comes, the group that is at the right goes to the top. You know, these little things that can be done uh, with code, I hope that uh, they start implementing them in Bubble. But the experience with Flex Flexbox is already so much better than with the past editor. And yeah, I can't wait for you to try and let me know what you think. So uh, I hope this video helps. I'm going to record a new one where I... Um, create a header and another one where I create a dashboard because I think those two examples can really help you understand how Flexbox, Flexbox <laughs> works. But uh, hopefully this video is a good introduction and it makes everything a little bit clearer. Okay, cheers.